Hello and welcome to Let's Play in the Space 2, Series 8, Episode 35. I'm JC Proton. We are picking up at the middle of turn 98. We are playing a standard faction of the Unfallen on endless difficulty uh, in a normal speed game. It's early in the morning, but uh, and I'm underslept, but we're going to have a good time. Okay, so in this episode, we are going to be declaring war on the United Empire again <laughs> and attacking their system we're ending this truce that we agreed to they 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 paid us off with like 105 110 something like that deciduous trees and uh i figured it was worth grabbing them since we're probably going to use those in our system development so it's like sure i'll give you a break in my aggression for a turn so that happened. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into it here. Um, let's, let, let's do it now. Declare war. Oh, he's being the strong silent type now. He used to be with the sassy mouth. But apparently we've gotten past that stage now. <clears throat> Either that or the game's kind of bugging out maybe. I don't know. It does that with him. Okay, so he's surprised that we declared war on him because we just had the truce start last turn, so. <laughs> Surprise! Um, yeah, we're also going to continue attacking uh, Craver fleets, um, especially their civilian fleets. So that's that's uh, fun stuff that's going to be happening. Um, okay, so we're going we're gonna to siege Dill here. Okay, we need more siege ships. That's not enough. Uh, let's go ahead and attack that. Okay, that's 900 dust. What else can we attack? We can go after him here. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's go through the messages real quick here. Um, so stuff I've done off camera, I've already moved um, some populations around uh, that needed moving. And um, we hit some thresholds here. Let's see, we already had hey, healthy staples. There's a Pulsos law, um, which is supposed to give uh, extra science from industry. There. Co-op code gives plus 0 0.1 science per industry produced. Um... So 10% of your industry you get also as science. So I did math. I added these up. Um, that comes up to around 3,500 science or so. So I kind of want to compare that against... Um, I want to compare that against the... The law we have here, cram exam. So right now we're producing 23,185. So let's see, if we cancel that, what do we drop to? Uh, okay, 19,735. Now let's pass co-op code so so we have the options peaceful prescription symbiotic living co-op code brains over bucks would be even more science probably because <clears throat> i think uh, co-op code is about 15 percent larger host center to bob so anyway the, these are the options we could do my precious Resource generation on luxury resource deposits. That's that's pretty solid. <clears throat> Let's try co-op code just to see uh, how it comes out. 
27. So it's it's about the same. It's really close to being the same. Uh, it's within a couple hundred, right? I think it's a little bit less. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty similar to to the uh, the sciency one, the cram exam. Um, so. Kind of a coin toss between the two. Okay, so we um, let me show this. So, seeing that we needed more um, ships, I can I can tell I'm a little tired. Sorry, sorry with the lags in my uh, ability to speak. Um, seeing that we needed more seed ships, I went ahead and queued up as many as we could crank out in a couple of turns. Uh, and so that number came out to be a total of 14. Oh, this one's not going to get that done in time, is he? Maybe. <laughs> so altogether, all it's, uh, it's like 13 or 14, apparently. So we're going to get those cranked out and get those sent on up here and put to work. So we're sieging down Dill. Um, we completed the adamantian electroplating, which gives us an agile command, which gives us another battle tactic set and gives us full reserves. So I'm gonna go ahead and put full reserves in to our tactics. reserves so like diplomatic immunity could be situationally useful but I think I'm going to go full reserves the ability to uh, attack multiple times is just so useful let's see let's put it like this because that's medium range that's medium range ish repair and recover these are like two of my favorite battle tactics here uh, if you were the proud, 30% uh, damage bonus every time we lose a sh one of our ships. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll be handy if we're getting outmatched and we have a big swarm of small ships. Um, and the turtle's useful. You know, whole plating absorption, man. It's hard. To, uh, that, that's a good one. If you're going up against somebody who has a lot of kinetics, that's, that's often a pretty solid uh, option. Okay, cool. Um, so one of the things we're going to need to do is pick more research. Um, we apparently have titanium to spend. Uh, titanium is going to be useful when building uh, fire ships. So if we're going to be building fire ships, I want to be building good fire ships. So I want to have a better version of those, which is these. Um, now, of course, they unlock extra module slots with adamantium, which we don't have a lot of. Hopefully, we won't really be building that many fire ships. And we'll go ahead and go with these uh, enhanced thorn class, just because it allows extra troops on ships. <coughs> and it's good to have the extra troops for um, invasions, for invading systems. And, uh, you know, I mean, theoretically, we would use titanium module to unlock more module slots, but whether we really gonna do that, I'm not so sure. I'm not a fan of, I to try to minimize the amount of um, uh, strategic resources used on ships, because ships kinda go boom, you know, and then those strategic resources are gone forever. So I like to put them in buildings and stuff if I can instead. Okay, and we'll get an enhanced light class ship, so that'll be really nice, and that'll get us two more on this so we really only need one more to unlock the next level which will give us one more law slot which is pretty useful and uh, plus one movement speed for civilian ships so that'll be good too so we're gonna <clears throat> get that unlocked either with this one <clears throat> the um, extra influence and uh, enabling influence conversion <clears throat> excuse me but I'm not really making that the highest priority right now and the same with cultural and verdicts um, get more systems occupied before triggering expansion disapproval which is like yeah I, I have plenty of approval right now um, 
and going with autonomous administration, that's not going to happen until after we have um, completed this tier. Um, so I think I want to get these military techs for improved ships. Uh, I want to get those knocked out. And then I think that's going to be probably Galactic Security Charter <clears throat> Excuse me for more trade subsidiaries. Um, so it's either that or um, might be custom nucleotides um, for the cosmetic genetics and build another um, population slot on all fertile planets or sterile planets. Um, that's pretty handy because we're kind of starting to max out on populations in some of our systems. It would be nice to, to, to raise the limit a bit. So that's a thing. Um, so we'll knock these out first and then we'll kind of revisit. <coughs> Here's my thought. Excuse me. Sorry with the, the coughing and stuff this morning. Um, let's go ahead and design the upgrades, man. Oh, Ministry of Truth. So that's the unlock. The deed. Okay, so... It gives plus 10 approval per heroes assigned to a fleet, plus 40 defensive troops per turn. Can only be built once in the galaxy. And it allows a plus 5% Fidzi, food industry, dust science, and influence per empire at war on that planet. One of our star systems. Of course, that would be Koyasil, right? <coughs> the AA the AA system where our home planet is it makes the most food it makes the most industry it makes the most dust it makes the most science it makes the most influence it's it's our number one system right so yeah that's where we would put the ministry of truth Cool. And in order to get that, what do we have to do again? Be the first to build the wonder in one of our systems. Oh, it only costs 18,720 industry and 80 orichalcix and 80 quadranix. Okay. Kind of pricey. Interesting. Okay, so it's unlocked. All we have to do is build it. Okay. Ministry of Truth would take nine turns if I had all the resources, which obviously I don't yet. Okay. So I need 80, so that's about six turns away. And six turns away till I have enough for a Cal 6. Okay. Well, I guess it's going to be a race to build it. We'll see, we'll see who can get there first. Um, okay, so we're sieging here. Um, we're sieging a little bit over here. Uh, this guy looks like we're going to go ahead and Drop the hammer. Let's see, that's 5,200. That guy has 180 and 1,804, so less than 2,000. I think I want to start with the more important fight. This one here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that little fleet, 12,000 attack, and he has damaged ships, 3,000 attack. Okay, let's do that one first. That's, that's more important. Okay. We'll do repair and recover. <laughs> the 
this might if, if we wound if we wound this hero then that's going to give us the thing we need to complete that quest line he's thinking it over here we go we're going to throw down man He's going with Get Lucky, 70% damage bonus on critical hits. He's got fighters and bombers in the center lane on his coordinator. Looks like lasers and maybe rail guns or, or, or guns. And then that one's lasers. And that one's mostly lasers and some guns or rail guns. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna skip to action. Check out the math. Cool. Um, okay, wow. They did a lot of damage. We took a lot of damage. Came out of it still a little bit damaged on the Bastion. Definitely took some beating here. Kinetic weapons. We dished out 7,900 with guns. 3,500 with missiles. Our lasers did 9,600. Our beams did 1,400. Their hull plating absorbed 5,700. And their shields absorbed 4,600. Okay, so from them, we took rail, rail gun damage, which bypasses defenses. <coughs> Excuse me. And a whole bunch of laser damage. And a little bit of bomber damage. Hull plating was not very effective. And our shields absorbed a little over 3,000. Yeah, because, I mean, hull plating is good against kinetic damage. And they had energy damage. And then that bypasses defenses. So, and those are, I don't know if those are energy or kinetic bombers. Okay, I want to watch that again, and I want to watch it with the uh, scan mode on. <clears throat> okay, we'll skip to action here. energy fire here come their bombers <clears throat> my shield goes down okay I want to take a look at these bombers Take a looky there. 
So it looks to me there's definitely a difference here. So this is a fighter and this is a bomber. So there's definitely uh, you've got the fighters escorting the bombers here. Cool. Cool screenshot off of that, right? Maybe make a smaller one. Sometimes these file sizes are pretty limited. Go back to the scan view and here. Let's see how long these bombers last. They're getting attacked. Chop, 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 chop. Excuse me. Yeah, those uh, those fighters really did not last very long. Uh, this, the uh, the bastion seems to have a pretty good amount of point defense. See, it's got guns along here, <clears throat> so it's definitely got some de decent amount of guns on it for point defense, which I guess handled those fighters. <clears throat> Cool, and we got uh, Forged in Battle completed. So now we have the Behemoth Overdrive uh, Battle Tactic, Berserker. Okay, let's take a look at that. Of course, I just, <laughs> I just picked a tactic, right? So we'll see. We'll see how good it is. Berserker is 25% damage increase on ships alone in a flotilla. So ships that are alone in a flotilla that have 25% increased damage and it's a short range. Very interesting, it's super aggressive. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's really good for if you have like, just solo like carriers or whatever, big ships just, just all by themselves. Hmm. Pretty interesting. I don't think I remember ever seeing that before. <laughs> okay, Behemoth Overdrive completed. Decisive victory on that. That's cool. I don't think we need to rewatch that anymore. Um, here's the stuff I built. Uh, wrapped up some microwave pipes, get some real time relays going. Did some terraforming and then queued up additional terraforming behind those. And uh, a little bit of resource boosting kicking in. All right, so let's let's upgrade uh, let's upgrade our fleets. <laughs> okay, so right now the thing that increased uh, questioner is not going to be affected. Vine ships, thorn, six will. So the only change is I'm going to switch the energy weapon over from the basic Hell Array laser. I'm going to change it to the anti-gluon beam. So the Hell Array laser, you've got 80% hull planing penetration, 10% shield penetration. Um, and it's really best at medium range. 100% damage at medium range is 50% damage at the non-medium. So it's... 37% or whatever, 37 damage, um, and then half of that it's short or long. 
so that's like 13 and a half um, at, this, at the non-optimal ranges versus anti-gluon beam is 30 damage but it's at all ranges um, this one has 10% chance crit this one's only 5% however um, you see this one has 80% and 10% and this one over here is 90% the whole plating dead penetration and 10% shield penetration so armor is half as effective against the beams versus the lasers um, and it's also at mm, you know max damage all the time so comparing the total damage output this is 354 versus 332 it's a little bit better it's just a little bit better so we're going to apply that to the thorn so now it's thorn sevens the overwatch is not affected because it's guns the fire will be affected so the change we're making there is to go with The upgrade from lasers to beams so we're going from 2039 to 22 there's a direct comparison between the two. makes us good at long, medium, and short range. <clears throat> it's basically the closer we are, the more dangerous we are. And one armor and triple shielding. Yep. And then the seed ships are not going to change. And the light ships. they also stay the same okay so that's what that's got the upgrades built so let's, we, we can queue those up at places and what I'll do is I'll, I'll probably do it mostly off camera um, but I'll, I'll do it like this To get a few queued up here and I don't know exactly I'll queue probably five turns deep or something like that um, so let's see we got that done so I'll, I'll do that part off camera and then let's just go ahead and uh, upgrade ships that we have this one upgrade not too crazy expensive Looks like we only built one. Let's see these ones here. Looks like these. Okay, let's see how the damage changes on these. So 1993 damage changes to 2122. So not a huge change. <clears throat> it's really not. Okay, this guy is because it was guarded when he got there. So all movement was spent. So we're going to go ahead and put him to guard mode. Can't move anymore anyway. So we'll just catch this ship when it shows up. Let's go ahead and fight at Genomos. And we'll 
do repair and recover. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> That's going to be ugly for sure, man. Going to be ugly for sure. Let's put this guy out here by himself. <clears throat> Which means they lost the damaged battleship. Oh, that hurt. Ooh, you know that hurt. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, they're hurting. Okay, so let's see. He's guarding. They're guarding. That's guarding. That's guarding. Everybody's guarding. <coughs> Great. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Um, let's... Let's go up here and do other fun stuff. Let's see, Kraz is not in range, so those guys are gonna have to just chill. These dudes are not in range to entwine, so they're just gonna have to chill. Um, these dudes are gonna guard. Over here, looks like we're clear to explore Deneb. Let's head over and do that. <coughs> Subterranean one on a gas, so I'm guessing Quadranix. Looks like we are just about done over here. Uh, this guy's over at Viacarus. Pirate their remains. Ooh, maybe it's Hyperion. Come on, Hyperion. Give me Hyperion. That would be great. No, 60 science. Ah, well, you can't win them all. Someone's are doing some work over here at Yetix, man. They're seizing it down at 116 per turn. Bros, that's that's almost impressive, right? Look at that. It's got a fleet. It's 28 of 29 command points. 10,000 attack, 11,000 defense, 206,000 hit points. And then another fleet of 27 command points. 183,000 hit points, 8,800 attack, 10,000 defense. Pretty solid, man. <clears throat> pretty couple of pretty solid fleets there. <laughs> okay, well, uh, cell phones are definitely going after the Vodiani right now, man. All right, so now we're gonna try to start getting our fleets northbound. So I know this is guarded. Last I checked. So if I was going to fly to here, by default, I would go through that guarded system, which I don't want to do. So a similarly good route would be going this way. I guess we'll just do that. And as long as I don't catch the pirates along the way, which I think I'm going to be okay. 
I think that's, I, th I, th I think we're set. Yeah, we're, we're basically out of things to see. Uh, this guy can just go cruising all the way up here to Acellus. I think. Ruins four on a toxic? Yeah, you know what that is. Dudes. Endless boundaries. <clears throat> That'll be cool. Hook up the Rift Warren with some more endless foundries. That'll help them uh, get stronger and fight the Vodiani and fight the Cravers, man. <clears throat> All right. So, we got some stuff we can do over here. This question number five. And take out a Craver fleet. And let's see. This one here says station. He can take out a Craver fleet. Get some 1800 dust. Nice. This one here. <clears throat> Another 900 dust. <clears throat> That's great, man. We had enough to upgrade the fleets that we had uh, that were up upgradable. Um, okay, cool. So this guy is going to catch this one that's coming across. And this one again is going to catch these two. <clears throat> and let's see here. This guy is guarding already. I moved him and he's guarding. He's going to catch this one. A Giovannis. This one's guarding. He's going to catch uh, this one. Uh, Cravers are still invading. Oh, no. Uh, Cra Cravers defeated the pirate lair. And then the Lumeris decided to create an outpost there. And now there's it's getting sieged down and starved out by this blockade from the Cravers. So until they clear out, I'm going to be hesitant to try to go into that system. Hopefully they'll clear out. I'll just keep an eye on it. I could have these two trade places, honestly. Because this one is the lost ratio. Let's do that. That way the lost because the loss ratio is more expend expendable. <coughs> I wouldn't be I wouldn't be super upset if it, if it got caught and damaged, you know. That wouldn't be the end of the world. And, the, and this one's getting guarded as well. Cool man, we're having uh, we're having fun little games of uh, horror, uh, war harassment, horror. Uh, yeah, we're raiding. We're doing raids basically. Okay. Well, I think we're I think we're about done with this turn, man. Um, I guess I will do it off camera, um, just to get uh, the right kinds of ships queued up. Um, Gonna blow away. Oops, sorry about bumping the mic there. Um, gonna get rid of these, uh, the old Thorn ships and get the new ones, uh, the new Thorn 7s queued up instead. Um, so I'll handle that off camera and then we'll come back next time. Uh, turn 99, which I believe will be episode 36. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you guys next time.